will be, I'm going to read the introduction that he wrote of the, of the candidate, each candidate wrote, and then we'll start to ask questions. Uh, this is Sam Hansgrinko. Sam is the vice chair of the 14th board. Never mind, chop <laughs> and, and Chris Potter, editor of the City Paper. to demystify the committee endorsement process so when the Chris. press that inevitably hey, says, oh, look at those disgusting people that they endorse, <laughs> uh, and who are those committee people anyway, some of the folks in the community will actually have had some input. Um, this, this is just for candidates who have filed for endorsement with the Allegheny County Democratic Committee. There are some other folks here that I wanted to, to recognize. Catherine Buckbar, who is the well, I thought you'd be out there asking questions this way. Just uh...
just by that division. As a family court judge, the family had experience in another the best relations and juvenile justice function. Uh -huh. I'm going to work with three compound sentences a day, and so that's it. Thank you very much. In addition, I don't want to we have Dan, the state representative Dan Frankel is here. Uh, Dan is a progressive leader in the legislature out of Squirrel Hill. Uh, we have State Senator Jay Costa, who is helping to
the, also, the article also wanted to describe the benefits of construction, uh, that there will be approximately 1,000 new jobs and hopefully a spinoff of about 4,000. Uh, my question, and it's sort of going to be a rolling question here, so I'd like to talk to you about it, is, is this the deal that we have to have now, that UPMC um, is looking to, to uh, raise get about 600, I'm sorry, about two to three hundred million dollars in federal funding. Uh, we'll take 30 acres uh, in Hazelwood that's not being used right now. Uh, we get the jobs, but UPMC will, those that property will be taken off of our tax rolls again. Uh, is that a good enough, is that a good trade? Is that where city council, uh, is that where our city is now? And is that the type of deals that we're gonna have to do? I, I was gonna say that sounds like a softball for you, but uh, actually maybe not now. Um, well, I don't mean to be a softball. You, okay. Uh, <laughs> but Corey, why don't you okay, I'll go first. I mean, about that project, I was with Congressman Doyle and a number of elected officials in this room when we discussed that project. It's a $600 million project that's going to bring 1,000 jobs to our region. Yes, UPMC is with, with that project, and they're actually facilitating the project, but it's a Department of Defense research plant. And that's a national organization that's coming here to secure a location in Hazelwood. And I think if we let that land sit there, the LTV site has been vacant for more than 15 years. If we let that sit there longer and longer and longer, nothing's ever going to happen to it. And it's not just the jobs that are going to be created there, it's going to be the access to the facility so that it's going to open up the waterways so that we can do development around the site. It's not going to be a plant where there's going to be smokestacks and you can't get in. Yeah, it's going to be a secure location, but how they develop these locations now, you could put it right in the middle of a neighborhood and nobody will know the difference. So, I mean, it's not just going to create the jobs. It's going to get people living there and working there, and that's something we need to do. And as a councilman, you need to be that leader to bring those people together to create the jobs. I think okay, but, is it the answer to question, please? I'll, I'll, thank you, Gene. Um, so, so but, I, but to address the, the point is, I mean, it, it, I, it, I'm not against the project. I agree yeah. with all those things. They right. all sound great. But are we at the point where UPMC gets to dictate that they don't have to pay taxes on this land? We're going to take 30 acres away. Well, if it's the, if it's the UPMC we're talking about, it, it's it's actually a Department of Defense project. So so it's a little different. It's not UPMC like they were in different areas. And if we want to talk about UPMC, I always thought they were, that they should even at least pay its payroll tax. That's a half a percentage, and that would raise the city 22 million dollars. So I mean, if we want to talk about issues like that, that's fine. But you also have to move into Harrisburg to get them to pass certain laws because you can't just have a nonprofit law in the city and nowhere else in the state. So. Just, in, just so to be clear, in the article, it's a little vague as far as who they talk about UPMC securing the property. So well, it doesn't, I mean, it wasn't clear yeah. whether they were going to be owning it. But okay. The, the point is, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, uh, quite fortunately, I had a good talk at U McGough's fundraiser a couple Saturdays ago, <clears throat> excuse me, with a, with a guy who's working on a report all about the entire site along along the river, all, th all across Hazelwood. Um, a couple of things he told me is that, first of all, UPMC is actually uh, making some noises about letting it be a taxed property. Now, how, how it's going to be taxed or how that's going to be arranged isn't clear. What I found kind of distressing about it, though, is that part of the package, uh, from my understanding, part of the package to encourage the federal government to give the money uh, will include a some sort of TIF financing from the city, uh, and, and I'm, I'm always, uh, by and large, I'm always opposed to TIF financing, partly because it's been abused so many times and used on kind of non-brownfield kind of projects. Interestingly enough, though, this might be just the place for a TIF, but obviously there's going to be a big push for public funding of, of, of this project be, beyond what the federal government gives. It'll be money from the city. And then, of course, 30 acres, that's only one chunk, maybe a third or, or less, of the entire property along the riverfront. So these, these foundations, there, there are four of them that own the property. They're called uh, El Mano, Allegheny, Monongahela, Ohio. Of course, they're concerned about developing the entire site. So they want to make sure that this, this project, the vaccine manufacturing plant, is done right. Uh, and just, just beyond that, I mean, city council is going to have a lot to do with this project, if we get it, if it comes to Pittsburgh and if it goes to Hazelwood, the land has to be rezoned. 
uh, as Corey mentioned, there's, uh, there's access issues. Uh, 2nd Avenue and uh, Greenfield Avenue in particular will have to be reconfigured. Great to have the jobs there. I know the people in Homestead. I've heard them. I've been to community meetings. They're desperate for jobs. They're desperate for development. But it's got to be done right. And you know, Sam, touching this thing about UPMC and, and whether they, they should bigfoot it or not, uh, we'll have to address that in a lot of different projects. So let, me, let me roll into my second question. And you fill a little bit of that time with Dave. Uh, you can, uh, I want you to answer first. But what, as a, as a councilman for that district, right. how would you see the, the role, the community's role? Um, do you see a community de development package as part of this plan? Um, environmental issues, traffic issues, what other issues would you see that you'd want to be leading on? Yeah, you know, I, I, I keep I keep hearing not just from Corey, but I keep hearing that it's it's going to be a clean plant, right? No smokestacks. I, I think we need I, I, again. We're, everybody's for the project, but it'd be great to have some more information coming from UPMC about about just what the process uh, involves. Raw materials have to be brought in, right? Uh, there, there's 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 some. Uh, Pharmaceutical in industries are are somewhat inherently clean, but they still make a product. They, they're still there's still some byproduct from from the uh, from the process. Uh, as far as the community de development package goes, well, well, certainly Hazelwood needs more and more housing, right? I mean, we're tearing down, which we should be. We're tearing down all the dilapidated and abandoned housing in Hazelwood, and the Hazelwood Initiative is doing a, a bang up job of trying to replace the housing, but they can only do so much. So why not have UPMC or the federal government be involved with, with, with enhancing the entire community and not just at 30 acres? Yeah, I, I think the start of that project is actually going to be with the Hazelwood community, who I've had a relationship with my whole life. And it's getting those individuals down there trained so that they can work in that facility, so that they can afford homes, so that they can live there and raise their families there. And that, that's the next step for the councilman, is to ensure that those jobs stay in Hazelwood and that we can work as a coalition with the county, with the state, and especially with the federal government to ensure that our people in Hazelwood are trained so that once they do the construction jobs in that site, they can also continue their employment some other, at other sites. So whether they go to the labor unions and get trained to work in that facility, that's great. But then also the vaccine manufacturing part of it, you don't need a college degree. So, you know, that, that's everyday people that have had hard times in Hazelwood, and we can get them into that facility and create good working jobs for them. And it's not like UPMC is going to run away. This is a 25-year project, so they can't, you know, get up and run tomorrow. So they're going to be there for a while, and that's, that's something that the councilman has to be able to do is bring in the people from Hazelwood and ensure that they get the good-paying jobs that they're awarded down there. Can I just interject one point? I'm going to turn it over to Chris because Chris yeah. has some questions. Yeah, so some of these are questions we uh, at City Paper solicited uh, people to submit questions via email or online. Um, this is sort of a combination of those questions. Uh, the current incumbent of District 5, Doug Shields, has been a vocal opponent of uh, Marcellus Shale drilling within the city, uh, and the city has passed a ban on drilling within city limits. As a counselor, would you continue to support that ban, or do you think that there are circumstances in which drilling should be welcomed, such as to develop brownfields? And either of you can take this question uh, first. Me first. Okay. Uh, I'm against drilling uh, in the city or any residents. Uh, the only thing that concerned me a little bit about the ban was that it might open up to possible lawsuits in the future. But overall, I don't see any need to drill within the city limits at all. Chris? <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> yeah. If I, if I can just, just so I get a little time, expand it. Um, a, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, I heard some old Bob Hope jokes, and, and one of them was, uh, Pittsburgh's the only city where you can wake up and hear the birds coughing. And, uh, I, you know, it's a great joke, but I really fear having us go back to having that kind of reputation, right? And uh, I really appreciate your letter this weekend, Rich Fitzgerald. Um, I, I got it. I imagine the, uh, all the 14th Ward Committee got it. Uh, uh, you know, expressing Rich's uh, opinion about uh, strong regulation being needed and concern for the environment, and, and I'm glad to hear that. But one thing that doesn't sort of placate me, for want of a better word, is this idea that, you know, we won't be seeing drilling in the city for at least 12 years. 12 years comes like that. I, I, I don't want drilling at all, ever, in the city. Let's just draw the line there, right? 
And you know, I, it'll be too easy for a comedian to get up and say, um, you know, something like Pittsburgh has great health care. It's the only city where you can get an x-ray and take a shower at the same time. So I don't, I don't want to go that far. I, <laughs> so I'm sorry, I had to use that, but thank you. And uh, great. so I'm glad we're on the same page. I'm, I'm glad to hear that from my opponent. Yeah, no, let's, I'd, I'd like to get another question. Yeah. As a counselor, uh, this is a question from some uh, biking advocates in the city. As a counselor, what would you do to make Pittsburgh more friendly to bicyclists and pedestrians? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, actually, I'm glad to say that uh, although I did not get the job, I was one of seven people that was interviewed for the bike and pedestrian coordinator job. So I, just, just in that respect, I have, a, I have a big commitment to biking. I bike to work every day. Uh, I, I wrote a little op-ed a couple years ago in the Post-Gazette where I said that one of my goals in life when I'm 50 is to do the trip to, to Washington with my family. So I really love biking. What would I do? Well, certainly I hope to continue I hope to support the continuation of that position of bike and pedestrian coordinator for the city. I mean, I know it's, uh, it, was, it was based on a two-year, I believe, grant from the foundation, so I hope we can continue that. Uh, man, I just want to see more and more bike trails. I'm not a type A biker, but, but I, I use it for recreation and commuting, and the, the more we can bike, the better off the city's going to be. And you know, there was just a survey out, 20% of Pittsburgh, not 11% of Pittsburghers, I believe it is, use public transportation, and 9% of Others get to work other ways, walking, biking, etc. It's not an insignificant portion of the commuting population, and it's getting bigger. Mr. O'Connor. Okay, uh, I would also support as, as best we can the bike lanes. In fact, uh, there's actually going to be a new bike lane development uh, on Greenfield Bridge going across the bridge. They're taking out a sidewalk so that it can open up to a bike lane. So, I mean, any support we can give to them. And working with the congressman, we actually worked on one of the bike lanes that was having trouble with a zoning problem with CSX Railroad. And we were able to work with the railroad to ensure that we can expand the bike lane in Sandcastle, right down there in Homestead. They needed 10 feet of railroad space. And we worked with them to ensure that they could have that space available to them. Yeah. No, I, I just want to thank the three of okay. you for uh, hosting this and, and for giving me the questions in advance. And uh, I respectfully ask the uh, committee's endorsement tomorrow, definitely, and, and everybody's votes on May 17th. I would love to represent the 5th District on council, and I th think I'm a really appropriate, prepared candidate for that. Thank you. You got questions in advance. My, my email was up and running all day, guys, you know. Um, no, I was just kidding. No, I, I, know, I know, don't worry. Uh, no, I again just want to thank everybody for coming out here and to let you know that, you know, if I'm elected, I will be a hardworking city councilman. You know, I hit the streets hard. Don't like to sit behind a desk. I'm out there. I, I like to hit the streets, talk to the people. I have a good working relationship with most of my neighbors in the area that I've lived in my whole life, and I have the ability to bring people together, so I ask for your support on May 17th. Thank you.